A good morning all. Now, it may seem to you, as it does to me, that the merde and the ventilateur are a little too closely aligned in the world at the moment. And so for that reason, I'm going to take you through my day as a gardener, a mother, a wife, a flower farmer and a businesswoman and show you how I stop myself going completely and utterly mad. What I do is I attempt to take control of a situation which is entirely out of control. I cannot control when my seeds will germinate and yet I sow them carefully. I cannot control whether my dahlias will sprout and yet I split them and pot them up carefully and make lists like this one. Here's one I prepared earlier. Look, that's my dahlia list of what I've got so far. Uh, uh, I have more coming in the greenhouse. Purple pom-pom, two. Fuchsia, fuchsia pom-pom, two. Evana, ten. Café au lait rose, eleven. You see where I go with this. Anyway, come along. Uh, I'm going to be singing in French all day with apologies to Charles Trenet. La mer de... <laughs> Instead of la mer. Anyway, you make it, I'm completely barking mad. And you're very welcome. Come along, this is a flower farmer's day in April. During the school holidays, spring break, I think you call it in America. And uh, yes, onwards and upwards. Come on, let's go. And a quick aside, the reason I have this very high neck up is I also have a cricked neck. Because, <laughs> you know, why not really confuse the issue? If you enjoy these clips, please subscribe to the channel. Please press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got new clips coming up. And if you find anything I say useful, helpful, or you'd like to supply the, support the clips as we go along, you can always buy me a coffee. The link is in the blurb to all my clips. Thanks very much. Right, enough of that. Sell, sell, sell my log. Right, the rattling you can hear is my neighbour, Sue, who is uh, an astonishing gardener and is mulching the bits of beds that we haven't mulched yet, uh, barrow load by barrow load. To my shame, she is 74 years old and, um, and we'll get through a thousand litres of mulch in a day without the slightest difficulty. So that's what she's up to. I am splitting, this is Dahlia David Howard. And you can see it's beginning to shoot ah, in the middle. Uh, I'm going to split this into two or three. Oh, there, it's, split, it's pinging up there as well. If you've got dahlias that you've overwintered and they've got a couple of stems like this, you want to shake the earth off. I keep the earth off over the winter because I keep the earth on over winter because it seems to, you know, shoots everywhere. It seems to um, keep the moisture away nicely and uh, I only split in the spring. So it's got a couple of nice shoots like this. I'm going to just pull it apart. Aha, here it comes. Et voila. One, good size. Two, and this is gonna make another one as well. That's what I'm doing with all my dahlias. I'm not gonna make you watch me do all of them because you will die of boredom but it's very very calming one cannot do this job when one is stressed strained or in a rush and that is why i like to garden because it doesn't work if you're stressed strained or in a rush so if you want to achieve your objective which is to make a garden you have to take a deep breath and just decompress a little bit before you do any of your gardening jobs. Right, I'll just finish this off and I'll show you the other dahlias. Stay where you are. Remember that big clump of David Howard? I've taken a little garden saw and split it like that uh, because it's too big otherwise. Just be careful using a saw, do wear gloves and um, don't use a big saw 
near your hand with no protection. Don't say I didn't tell you. My labelling, <laughs> bring you up a bit. My labelling is not always exact. This one says blue, blue thing, which is not an exact name for Adelia, but it means a great deal to me. It means that it is the small water lily, decorative water lily that's sort of lilac coloured with a kind of whitish edge. So that suits me. After all, I'm not selling. Hold on, the lads are coming in. Uh, yes, so blue thing means a great deal to me. I'm not selling my dahlias as a particular variety, nor am I selling the plants. And so blue thing suits me. <laughs> I'm going to stick with it. If your dahlias are just plain too big for the pot, even after you've split them, you can always cut a bit off uh, because they won't mind. There's plenty of strong dahlia tuber there. So I'm gonna take half this long bit and then it'll fit better. Now, here's a tip. I keep my watering can hanging on my tap, which may not be terribly good for the tap, but it means that the watering can doesn't end up with lots of slugs living on the bottom or even inside the watering can. So that when I come to watering my dahlias, as I will in a minute, I am not pouring slug eggs, sloshing slug eggs onto my pots of dahlias. Top tip. Right, uh, now I've set up my camera, I'm gonna go and get the dahlias. The thing about filming is it does mean that you spend about twice as long doing the job. And the hilarious thing was, I was talking to a friend the other day, very, very old friend of mine who lives in America. And he said, oh, loving the, loving the YouTube. Um, it must be fun, you know, and all the opportunity for all that hair and makeup, at which I roared with laughter. Imagine how little I would get done if I had to stop and do hair and makeup. Not my line. I do love this friend. I do, I do. So here are some of the dahlias in my trusty trolley. I've been seeing people buying trolleys on the back of my recommendations. I can tell you, a trolley will change your life. This is called The Handy. Uh, it is available on the in the UK. It was recommended to me by Oliver Dowding, who is Charles, the famous no dig gardener's brother, and who makes cider just down the road from here. They're all neighbors. Anyway, nice full watering can. And I'm gonna give my dahlias a really good soak. And then I'm not gonna water them again for ages because I don't want them to dry out. I don't want them to get too soggy. We still have plenty of cold weather. It's gonna freeze again this weekend. Um, so I'm just giving them a really good soak and then I'll leave them to sprout in the tunnel. Uh, come on, I'll show you the ones I've already done. Handy hanging your watering can on there. I can tell you. Here's another top tip. If you are growing anything, flowers, vegetables, gardening in any way, my gates have got chicken wire across them to keep the rabbits out. And they're a bit, you know, they're attractive gates <laughs> from a vintage store, uh, but that makes them rather inefficient. So we have to tie them together every night to stop them blowing open in the wind. Come on then, let's go. doing this floaty walkie away stuff but you then have to come back press no on the press stop on the thing and then edit it so um i'm not going to do that i'm just going to include all of this now before we go down the other end to put all those potted dahlias away with the rest of their brothers and sisters these are the dahlias which i put to sprout in the greenhouse a couple of weeks ago if you scroll back you'll see me doing it um and they're all sprouting away, which is very exciting. 
So there's one each of my various varieties in here. And can you see little green shoots? So they're not quite big enough for me to take all the cuttings yet, but next week they will be. Um, and I'm going to take a lot of cuttings and we'll see how they do. I have never propagated dahlias in this way before, um, but I am rewriting a book. <laughs> and so I thought I'd better do what I'm always telling people to do even though I've never felt the urge to do it before. And actually I'm quite enjoying the process. I can see that I'm going to end up with a lot more dahlias than I need, um, but that's okay. I have lovely neighbors who probably like some passed along their way. Um, these are warm beds, so they're on, uh, the, they are sand beds with warm cables going through them. Um, so there's just a little bit of warm in here. We have it's warm today but we have frost forecasts at the weekend so i'm gonna to have to keep an eye uh, keep an eye on them all and the slightest threat of frost i'm ready to cover them up with a little horticultural fleece um because all this i don't want to lose all these lovely i mean they're looking fantastic and i had these paper labels which i thought were going to be a disaster but actually they kept the writing on them despite the fact I've watered on them, uh, so I can tell what they all are. So happy days. I'm keeping these very, very sparely watered. You can always tell with something like this, stick your finger in and see if the um, compost underneath is a little dry, but this is all fine. So I'm gonna leave this here for the moment and I'll show you where I've got the rest of the dahlias ready to sprout. We'll see if any of them have come up yet. I shouldn't think so, but you never know. On the way we've got this little tunnel and it's got October sown sweet peas and they're sudden they've been sulking here all winter and suddenly they're pouncing and here on my propagating beds I'm beginning to harden off my hardy annuals for going outside sweet peas there Vicaria hispanica um, the surface may look dry, but I'm not going to water them unless I really feel that they're light. And if you heft the tray, you see, you can hear the sound. That's heavy. That does not need watering. The surface is dry because it's windy. Um, this is often the case with peat-free compost. Sometimes it's, it, the surface can look dry. Um, so this is Ami Majors. This is Honeywort. A lovely Scabious mix. Ami Visnaga, Candy Tuft here. And uh, that is Scabious of Ping Pong. There we go. Right, on to the dahlias. So this is where the dahlias all sit, waiting to sprout. And you can see, the ones I did last week are looking a little dry on the surface. So I'll go and pick them up and see if they're heavy enough or if I think they need a water. And look, you can see this one in the shade is still damp. And here, if I pull the surface away, it's damp underneath. So they don't need watering. But these ones, the first ones I did, they're a bit dry. So. I'm going to come back with my watering can and have a little rave up at this end, but I'm not going to overwater. I don't want them to rot. And because we have a frost forecast this weekend, I'm really going to be very careful. Here are the sprouting dahlias up close and personal. Oh, aren't they lovely? Yes, next week I will take the cuttings and look at that. Aren't they coming along? They're nicely. Look at that American Dawn. She's a beauty. Now it's 10.30, so time for breakfast. Gotta have a break. So now, breakfast had, it's time for a quick turn around. And what I'm doing is not shocks away, but pots away. And a quick sweep. I'm a keen 
clean sweeper of my work table. This table, Fabrizio made it out of, it's got an oak top, and we found the legs years and years and years ago at a barn some, full of croquant uh, in, over in the Mendips. And um, so he took these lovely old legs and made a great big tabletop. And this table will do anything from potting, to seed sowing, to wedding flowers, to birthday parties. It's a multi-purpose table. Right, time to get the trays out. Right, my next very calming job. I have a cup of coffee, beautiful mug, made by Rachel Pedder Smith Designs. They're lovely. Very keen on my mugs. I have lots of them. Mm -mm. And a pint of coffee. <laughs> it's Elevenses. So I'm now going through my second uh, seeds for sowing this year. That's the 2022 year rather than this flowering year. Uh, flowering year, it's my fourth sowing because I start with my biennials last June. Annuals in September, annuals in February. Here we have annuals in early April. And I love this because again, decompression and very calm. Chrysanthemum rainbow. Will I tray sow it or direct sow it? Tray. Nicotiana white trumpets. Ooh, these are all higgledy garden seeds, my friend Benjamin Ranyard, who lives on a narrow boat uh, with his dog Flesh, who's a Wiesler, um, sends me these seeds. So Nicotiana going to tray sowing. There are not very many seeds in a packet, so I'm gonna tray sow them. So I know where they are. Larkspur forecast is a frost this weekend. So I'm direct sowing this outside. More Larkspur. These are from Chilton Seeds. Look, poison, <laughs> it says on the packet. Ami Majors, definitely direct sow outside. Dorcas Carotta, wild carrot, definitely outside. More, high, more Larkspur, that's, I'm not gonna do that. Hmm. Should we have some climbing nasturtium? Put a few in a pot, be fun. I don't think they're gonna make brilliant cut flowers. This is what's called a loss leader, but looks nice in the garden and useful for wedding work, maybe. We'll see. Nigella, I've got plenty of Nigella, not gonna say that. Statis, tray. Jip, Covent Garden, could be outside. I'm gonna tray sow it. More Larkspur. Nicotiana Lime Green, definitely tray so. Cineglossum Amabile, that's the Chinese forget-me-not. Um, eeny, meeny, miny, tray. And here's the pink version, tray. More Larkspur, goes all outside. Uh, poppies, this is called Hen and Chickens, it's very pretty. And um, I really grow them for the seed heads, not for the flowers. They look, flowers look nice in the garden. Seed heads are very useful in floristry. I'm gonna put them in a tray. More larkspur. Oh, oh, a lot of larkspur here. I'm not gonna use all of this, surely. Lavatera, this is a tree mallow. Um, this one's silver cup, it's very, very pretty. And I'm going to sew it in a tray because I don't need too many of them. It's very easy to get a lot. More Lavatera tray, uh, Astor's tray, more Helichrysum, definitely tray. Oh, interesting. I've ordered myself some A-triplex and I have already got it seed growing all over the garden. So that's a waste of money, but nice seeds. So I'm not gonna sow them and I'm not gonna sow them. There we are. So now these are the number of trays I need. It's really simple. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 trays. And we'll be sewing direct outside. Let's get the trays done by lunchtime. And then we sow seed immediately after lunch. And then we've got flowers to cut because we wouldn't want to be bored. 
<laughs> it's got to be systematic, otherwise I get very confused. And I mustn't forget to cut the flowers because I have a demo online tomorrow. If you want to join me, book a place. Uh, the date will be very funny on the website, but it will be for tomorrow. I'm doing a living Easter wreath demo, which might inspire any of you to have a beautiful table centre or something to hang on your door. Uh, and I also have flowers to do tomorrow because I do flowers on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Very systematic about everything. Um, yeah, very systematic. Anyway, come on. It's really always worth fitting a tray, a little washout. I use a bit of washing up liquid. Um, just before you use the because, there might be mould, uh, it might be slug eggs. It's boring, it's time consuming. But the thing about boring, time consuming jobs is they're very calming. You can't rush them. They've got to be done. And in a day where la merde is a little too closely aligned with the ventilateur, this is a good day for pot washing. <laughs> right, let's sow those seeds. So remember I said 13 packets of seeds to sow. So that's 12 trays. And then the nasturtiums are big seeds, so they can go in their own little pots. And I'm quite efficient. Each of 12 trays takes two big scoops <laughs> or compost. It's really worth when you, um, when you put the compost in the tray, just feel around for lumps. This is not specialist seed sowing compost. I'm too mean to spend money, um, but it is worth just running your hands through just because sometimes there are lumps. I've got a really very stern hair thing going on here. There we are, softer. Oh, a bit more Instagram. <laughs> and then, once the trays have all been filled with compost, water from underneath. Never water seedling trays from above because if you water from underneath, the water will, if it's good quality peat-free compost, very important, the compost will absorb the water at the rate it needs, like a sponge, until it's full. Also use clean water, tap water, when you're making compost ready for seeds or watering seeds, because no pathogens. And this is quite dry compost, and soon I'll be able to feel the damp, and I'll see the colour changing, it'll get darker, and uh, it'll be just right for seed germination. There you go. I'm full of tips, I know. Yet another top tip. And yes, you can buy me a coffee for all these tips. This, helichrysum. If you're gonna grow straw flowers or dried flowers, chances are you're using them for autumn work or possibly winter Christmas work. So uh, grow colors that are good for autumn and winter. This is orange, good for autumn. And actually, I love a bit of orange against my orange willow for Christmas. But I keep away from sort of pale, sugary pink because that's more of a spring colour. There you go. Just if you're choosing. By the way, if you fancy knowing all about seed sowing, I have a seed sowing demo, which I think you can still order on my website to download. And I go through the whole process of seed sowing, what to sow in, how to sow, how to propagate, how to prick out, the whole shebang. Um, I can't do it all here, partly because I need to make a living, but also partly because it would take forever. <laughs> no, it takes an hour. There you go. Right, they're all done. Time for lunch. Right, my next trick, I'm gonna sow seven varieties. I need seven running meters. We're all gonna blow over. So I can measure my seven running meters like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Up to the bronze fennel. I have lovely builder's mesh with which I'm going to cover my freshly sown uh, seeds to keep the birds off. 
and to keep the soil damp. And I'm going to rake over the space. It's had lovely mulch on it all winter. I'm not going to be too fussy about it. I'm going to rake over. I'm going to have rows about nine inches apart. Nine inches apart, that is. And that, my friends, is that. Sow the seed, water it in, cover it up, leave it alone. I'll come back and look at it in a week or two. So I have drilled, you can see little drills going all the way up there. And now each of those drills is having a little water because then when I plant the seed, when I sow the seed, it's kind of got something to stick to. I think this is really worth thinking about. That way it won't blow away. It'll just stay where I sow it. Oh yes, I have lots of little things that I like to do. You'd probably say there are more efficient ways of doing it, but I'm kind of, especially on a day when the merde and the ventilateur seem a little closely aligned, it's good to do little slightly kind of, mm, almost repetitive, slightly obsessive, one might say, but um, possibly creative and close to the soil and sowing a seed is always a good thing, kind of stuff. And then every time, every time I've sown anything, I'm gonna cover it up quickly so I know how far I've got because I don't label. <laughs> because otherwise, there are labels all over the garden. So I just have to remember how many rows I've done of each variety. And as soon as I've sown them, And I'm not really super covering up. I'm covering up so that the earth, they shake down into the earth. They'll get watered in in a minute. It's difficult to concentrate and talk to you at the same time, but very good for the mental health. It's like doing maths. So once all the seeds are in, I give them a real water and I'm using a watering can because I can make sure that not a little bit is mixed and I can see where the rows are so I can make sure that watered in not just so that they'll absorb the water and expand but designing your own cut flower patch, I recommend you have a tap in the patch. This patch has no tap. Mm. Some of my patches have taps, not this one. And this is the one where I grow my annuals. I must be off my trolley. Right, more water, on we go. So there you are. <coughs> oh, tea cake. It's not the single most beautiful thing you ever saw in your life. I'm waving it for Brito, who's just gone back. Because it's spring break, the children, basically we're a full-time taxi service to all our friends. Luckily the friends will have nicer houses than ours with more fun things to do. So when we're not being taxi drivers, we can get on with the job. Anyway, there you have, it's like a mini tunnel, nice and warm. You can feel the earth radiating heat. So wherever you are in the world, if you can feel the earth radiating heat, you can start sowing direct in the soil. These are very hardy annuals, so they should be okay. The net will protect them from the birds who will come to see what I've been doing. They'll want to come and dig everything over. And there you have it. I'd better go cutting flowers now. I love my, my, basically my tripod sort of sinks forward and I have to stand this way. But I don't know about you, my mental health feels more organized and better. Whew. 
despite the fact that the merde and the ventilateur are still too close together for my liking. Bon, il faut couper les fleurs, comme ils disent en la France. Allons-go. Right, I've just looked at the length of this clip. It's half an hour. So if you've born with me the whole way through, congratulations. Um, I'm going to quickly cut the flowers and maybe make another clip for that <laughs> because otherwise you'll be here for an hour of my banging on. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the session. Uh, if you have found any of the tips or tricks useful, please do buy me a coffee. The link is in all the blurbs for all the clips. Please subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon.